Hello, people. Welcome to Wrestling with the Devil. Now, I'm doing this show because I'm going to talk about Triple H. People are under the assumption that I favor Triple H. I've been doing videos reporting what's going on. That has nothing to do with uh, supporting Triple H. To me, Triple H, for 20 years, was at Vince McMahon's side. He knows where all the skeletons are. He's not a very nice guy. He drove people out of the, that were fantastic people, out of the WWE because of jealousy. If somebody came along and he did not like them, he would destroy them. And he could do this because he was married to the boss's daughter. You know, and we're going to talk about this. I'm going to play something uh, Ryback says. Now, Ryback, I like this guy a lot. I mean, when it comes to not kissing ass and feeling the same way now as when he left the company. Uh, because you have guys like Steve Austin who hated Triple H. Now he's doing a little bit of ass kissing. But I want to play a couple things. And uh, I want to say uh, this is a three-minute video from Ryback. Please go to his channel. Please sub to him. And um, I'm going to play this, and um, hopefully it's okay with him. But this is a positive thing toward Ryback, not a, not a negative, uh, not even close to a negative, because the guy means what he says, doesn't back off what he says, and he realizes exactly who Triple H is. Let's play this. One second seeing on tv that's a lot of people they're going by just that there's a lot of people i guarantee you that are not happy with him and he's very manipulative and he's he has he, he can be like vince in different ways back there you guys only know though what you're getting what's getting leaked out and put out people we're watching and yes we're and but like in, you hear that people we only know what's getting leaked and put out see what they're doing doing is they're trying to build up triple h and make us like him some people like him but if you go back, and we're going to go over this talent that he destroyed over the years. And there's a couple big ones uh, that he was really jealous of. He wanted to get them out of the way because he didn't want them in the company. Because he couldn't be top dog as long as they were in the company. And there were a couple of them that got really big. But let's go. Uh, People yeah. go by the product. And so the product very well could be and is better by what fans currently want right now. But that's only one piece of things. There's a lot that goes on with that. And there's other talents that are not getting getting the shine that they were previously and like, but we'll have to see. Like, but I, I've heard in like enough people, I know Vince Russo does this show and the different things, and I've talked about it. This Vince trial stuff is a real thing going on. Yeah. And I, I believe that after WrestleMania, more pieces are gonna be gone. I don't know if yeah. he's gonna be included. I I personally hope because I don't believe that the man has changed. I don't buy the heart attack stuff that he ever changed or any, I don't buy it because I just know the things that he has personally done. And I know that he's yeah. still in like from my own situation with them wanting to settle the trademark and then him being afraid to talk. I just know he hasn't changed. By the trademark, basically he, uh, Ryback wants his own name. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the WWE, uh, they're very good at keeping these things, uh, these copyrights and, uh, they won't give them up. So, uh, Ryback's been, under a case for a long time now. Uh, this is a guy that did not need to walk out of the WWE. He chose to walk out. He could have stayed. But he did not want to stay. Uh, and a lot of this had to do with Triple H. And he's not the only one that they would want to stay because of Triple H. And we're going to talk about that. Let's finish this up. Because if he did change, he would have, he would have wanted to like... He would have wanted to make sure we agree on the final pieces of that settlement that they reached out to try to do, not me, with it. So that's how I know he's still like nothing's changed with him. Because and that's the thing too is like you had your personal stuff with him, and you've seen also how he treated other people. Yes. Right? So yes. like you have seen more than the normal. Yes, man. and I just know how manipulative he is, and he'll go get things changed to hurt other people. That that doesn't say anyone who's in the does this loves the business. That's not say it's like. And, you know, this. these are facts that he's stating right now. He'll do anything to hurt anybody. I mean, the difference between Triple H and, and all these other guys is he outsmarted them all by making the boss's daughter fall in love with him and marrying her. You know, you got to remember, before he did this, 
uh, when he first came in, the big thing was Bret Hart. Bret Hart was very close to McMahon. Uh, but Triple H started dividing a wedge there uh, between Triple H, I'm sorry, between Bret Hart and Vince McMahon. This guy knew how to uh, simultaneously get people out of the way. And that's what he did. And uh, he's the best at being manipulative when it comes in, in to the, uh, anybody else in that company. But there's there's ways of like, hey, you make people do things and have them sign NDAs so that you can like fulfill certain things. And like, I just think I just know enough to where he's, he's not. Yeah, he might be better than Vince on certain things for the product, but he's not. I just think I, I won't be shocked if he's gone. And I, I think yeah, you're for, saying just because the product is better doesn't mean that it's changed like the environment. Yes, right? yes, that's exactly what I'm saying because it's a product of Vince and the environment. Yes, even though things could be it could be slightly better than when Vince was there and people see so what he's saying is absolutely right. They're still pushing Vince's product. Vince may be gone, but a good majority of it is still Vince's product, uh, and they proved they don't need Vince's product, especially after WrestleMania. Um, and was that just a show when Stephanie McMahon's turned on her father in that ring? Was that part of just another show uh, for them to do? We don't know this, but would you put anything past Triple H and Stephanie? I personally think he's gone. I personally believe that they're pissed at him and they want him gone. Uh, but this is what uh, Triple H has done. When he wants someone gone, he will turn on them. He's always done it. So why would Vince McMahon be any different for him to turn on? We'll have a little more freedom. The, there's still that energy, that negative toxic energy is still present with it. And that yeah, culture, that yeah. the Vince yeah. culture. And that's where I think it needs to really be gutted out and cleaned out. If it's going to change for like the real betterment of the company. And like, I think they could replace what he's doing with, with Brian Gerwitz. And I think the rock coming in there, I think all the positives we're seeing will continue with that. And that there's still enough people there that or have their finger on the pulse. And there's enough good people in wrestling where the machine's already operable and running that those that direction can continue. So don't forget. Okay, people, underneath this, there will be a link to Ryback shows. He has a few of them. He's very popular. He has a lot of uh, uh, a lot of subs. He has a lot of uh, people that like his show. But the one thing that he does is he stays on it. He does not back off. And this is what I find impressive about the guy. So what I did today is I did a lot of research and seen over, you know, first of all, Steve Austin's kind of a disappointment. Steve Austin couldn't stand this guy. And uh, when it got toward the end of his career with Steve, Steve Austin, uh, when he left, did not like Triple H. Now he's kind of cozying up to Triple H. But this is what just recently happened. And once again, this is Ryback and this is from his Twitter account. One second. Okay, let's get back. Here we go. I'm going to put this up right now. Okay. Is it stone? Cold Steve Austin was not at WWE WrestleMania 40. It's being reported that Stone Cold Steve Austin wanted more money than WWE was willing to pay to have him come out and be involved in the Cody Rhodes Roman Reigns match at WrestleMania 40. When this kind of stuff gets out, it's being pushed out by WWE, which they do this to put heat on talents, Stone Cold Steve Austin included, despite him being the company's all time biggest star. Stone Cold Steve Austin was ultimately replaced by The Undertaker, which was still a great choice, and the crowd absolutely loved it. But let's be honest, that spot was for Stone Cold Steve Austin, and nobody would have been better than Stone Cold Steve Austin for that spot. WWE dropped the ball on this, and fans should be mad at Triple H and WWE for not giving Stone Cold Steve Austin what he wants, which we don't even know that exact amount. But I'm going to explain to you why this would have been so much better with Stone Cold. WWE has invested a lot into Cody Rhodes. And by having him get the rub from all these top stars, it helped make him even a bigger star after WrestleMania. But not having Stone Cold Steve Austin there was a huge mistake. 
as great as the Undertaker's reaction was, had that glass shattered in Philadelphia, that place would have come unglued. And Stone Cold Steve Austin coming down to the ring and giving his old foe, The Rock, a Stone Cold stunner, helping Cody become victorious, and then sharing the ring with Cody Rhodes, having beers with Cody Rhodes, ultimately leaving the ring to Cody Rhodes to go on to do what Cody did, would have made Cody even a bigger star than what they did. But... WWE and Triple H chose not to give Cody Rhodes the biggest, greatest rub of all time with Stone Cold Steve Austin, and they. Okay, what do you people think of that? Let me know underneath this video. I think he's absolutely right. I think that having Stone Cold would have been, you know, Undertaker is still Undertaker, but you could see the age in his face. You know, you could see he's he's weathered. He's an older guy now. He's not the same Undertaker no more. He lost his body mass and stuff. He's still intimidating, but he's not the same guy anymore. Okay, But Steve Austin uh, didn't come up, didn't show up for that show. But I just wanted to mention that to you because uh, we're going to get into this thing about why, uh, Steve, uh, why Triple H is probably no different than he ever was. And, you know, it, Ryback, Ryback's a good person to look because sometimes when I, I start falling for the hustle and the con, all you got to do is turn him on and you realize one thing. He was there in the back room with Triple H. He's never backed off what he feels about Triple H. Do you Can Triple H lead this company into another era? Yes, he can without a doubt. But does he want to do it uh, without uh, Vince McMahon's old ways? Will he be reporting to Vince McMahon? Not right now. I believe that him and him and his daughter uh, and Stephanie are angry at Vince, but I also believe that if they stay around, that might change down the road. They might forgive their father. And that's how a, a snake like him would get his foot back in the door. And let's not forget what happened. I'm going to show a couple people that Triple H really screwed over people. Okay, before you, uh, before we uh, make him the savior of the company, remember what he did to this woman? Here's a woman he's going out with. Listen, everybody cheats. Everybody, you know, not everybody. But a lot of people cheat in their relationships and move on. But he, it's not even about him cheating on this woman, China. What he did is he destroyed her along with Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie didn't want, China around no more. So she went up the Titan Towers. And the very day she went up there, she got fired. They said, we don't need you no more. And she was still a top draw. And they let her go. And they, while she was hot, they let her go because of Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. This is an example of one person that got destroyed by these two people. Let's go to the next person. Ashley Massaro. And I'm going to bring up Stephanie McMahon at this part because Stephanie McMahon uh, was uh, uh, responsible for a lot of uh, things that happened to Ashley Massaro. Ashley Massaro, she gets attacked in Saudi Arabia and Stephanie McMahon tells her to forget about everything. Don't talk about it. It will, it will hurt the military uh, along with Vince. And we all know what eventually happened to Ashley Massaro. In 2019, she took her life despite having uh, uh, her child still alive, something to live for, uh, the pain was too much. And I know this because that's what happened with my brother. He had stuff to live for. He had three beautiful daughters, but he chose to take his life because of the pain that this company has caused for them. Let's move on to the next guy. The summer of CM Punk. CM Punk was so hot. Everybody loved him. But the one person that didn't love him was Triple H. Triple H didn't like him because he disrespected Triple H. He wouldn't take no shit from Triple H. He wouldn't back off Triple H. If Triple H got in his face and said something, he would tell Triple H to go, go to hell. The guys that Triple H always got along with were the guys that kissed his behind. And we know who they are. But we know the ones that did not kiss up to him. And the punk and CM Punk definitely did not. It, it was no secret the, the tension that existed, and and this tension is potentially still there, even though he might come back now. 
And with uh, the trouble, the trouble brewing between them two back then, uh, stayed until he left, right up until the time he left. And um, just recently, he's been uh, um, quoted saying still negative stuff about Triple H. Can he go back? He might go back because uh, he walked away from AEW. And uh, I could see him going back. But um, uh, you have to remember, too, that that if he does go back, what exactly will be in store for him? Will Triple H give him a push? Or he's just going to go back and get a nice paycheck, uh, fight Cody Rhodes a couple times? What do you think it will be, people? Because this is a man's career that was put on hold. He was basically pushed out of the company because Triple H did not like him. And if you and and, and Triple H is uh, the son-in-law of uh, Vince McMahon. And Triple H stopped a lot of careers, people. I mean, Bret Hart despises Triple H. They listen, they're older now, they might get along. I'm not sure what the deal is on that. But the reality is this, Triple H uh when he came in, Bret Hart was the guy. I mean, when he really started getting popular. You know, you had the guys there that kissed Triple H's ass. Bret Hart was a superstar. Bret Hart said that he's an over... Bret Hart would say, name one wrestling move that uh, Triple H ever actually invented. He said at times he was a good wrestler. This is just from Bret Hart's words. But in general, he, uh, he just considered them average at best. He said that Triple H has no reason to be training nobody because uh, he hasn't been properly trained. So there's still a lot of deep, deep resentment there between Bret Hart and Triple H. And this is another career that was destroyed. Or, well, he, he was pushed out. And you know damn well he was in dad's ear, his father-in-law's ear. You know damn well. And it's always been that way something to you about this the following punk would have his very first pay-per-view match coincidentally teaming up with dx pair on their survivor series team punk the newer younger star received some of the biggest cheers and chants during the match a testament to the hard work that he put in at that point during the promo from their feud in 2011 punk made reference to this moment claiming triple h was jealous and unhappy that Punk started overshadowing him. It may have been jealousy, dislike, or perhaps even just circumstances that led Punk and Triple H to interact so infrequently on WWE television. The next notable point was in 2010, when Triple H would insult Punk's looks here and hygiene during a promo uh, with the Straight Edge Society. And this is how, this is what he did when he wanted to, to get someone pissed. He would say what he met in promos. He would pretend it's part of the show, but it's actually what Triple H met. Uh, this could have been just fun and games made to pop up the crowd, but there were seeds of something deeper. It wouldn't be long until the long hair was gone and Punk was beginning to ride a wave of momentum up the main event scene, leading to the infamous pipe bomb uh, which was the turning point of Punk's entire career. In, in a work shoot, Punk aired out the grievance against the company that employed him, insulting the likes of The Rock, Vince McMahon, and Triple H. Punk went in on several people, but his offhand comment on the doofus son-in-law, so basically called him the doofus son-in-law, uh, was so brief that it felt, uh, it, it felt even more sincere. It was as though he couldn't even find time to bother insulting Triple H anymore. I mean, Punk at that point thought that he proved that he was better than Triple H. He was a better wrestler than Triple H. And he was becoming more popular. And so you had this, uh, seed, of, this seed being planted and Triple H wanted to get him out of the way. Later that year, after the summer, Punk propelled him, propelled him into being one of, if not the top babyface in professional wrestling. He entered a feud with Triple H. The two were to appear 
of, of the biggest names in the WWE at the time. So putting them together made sense on paper. What followed was a messy storyline featuring a mysterious text, a brief Kevin Nash return to the ring, and a big match lose after big match lose for Punk. So basically every time he fought Triple H, he would lose. Triple H always made sure that he was the winner of these matches. The first came when he dropped the WWE title at SummerSlam. And that was like the hundredth time that Triple H won the title. Uh, and even uh, Bret Hart said that the guy, if the guy was so good, he wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have been like the 12, 13 time champion. Punk had made it no secret how he believes that Triple H personally attempted to bury him with capitalizing on the momentum of Punk being the clear, better business move. During the battles of the mic between the two, they cut deep with Punk bringing up these accusations of burying talent to light with uh, Triple H firing back with digs at Punk's physique. Punk is no strong uh, stranger to confrontations, even with those closest to him. So seeing him have a legit rivalry with someone who was rubbed him the wrong way is quite likable. Okay, so it's obvious that him, that, that um, Triple H wanted to destroy him. And eventually... Punk uh, gave him the opportunity in the openings to get rid of him. And that's Punk's fault. Uh, Punk walked out of the WWE after Royal Rumble in 2014. And on the way out, uh, he insulted the shit out of uh, Triple H in Vince McMahon's office. I mean, that's where they met. They tried to settle it. CM Punk was gone. He didn't want to deal with Triple H anymore. Uh, and ever since then, he hasn't been seen in the WWE uh, but after everything that happened with the AEW, he might possibly come back. And let's get back to Bret Hart. Now, let's remember what Bret Hart said. Bret Hart said that that he became jealous of him. Uh, and uh, he wanted to uh, get Bret Hart out of the way so he could move up the ladder. He wanted to be the one that was closer to Vince than Bret. And at the time that he wasn't closer to Vince than Bret, he started a uh, a whisper cam campaign behind Brett's back that got so out of control. Eventually, it led to uh, uh, the the. So this guy Triple H has outlasted everybody because he's ruthless. So we're supposed to believe now, and this is what Ryan Back's trying to say. We're supposed to believe now that this guy's all better. Okay, first of all, he has a heart attack, and then he does a video shoot of it. The doctor and everything, and the uh, who does that? He looked, he he even looked like he had makeup on. He uh, he didn't look like a sick man, and uh, that's just another guy. So, we got it okay. So, we can go on. There's so many more people that have been abused by this man. This man would stop people from moving up the ladder all the time if he did not like them, if they did not bow to him. Now, the guys that bowed to him, he loved, he pushed them. If those guys kissed his ass, oh, he was going to give you the push of a lifetime. But if you didn't kiss his ass, you know, th there was no push. And many people have said this too, especially the guys that have not been pushed uh, because of him. So I'd like you to tell me what you think. This is just something that I put out today with Ryback, Ryback saying that. And I just wanted to say to you guys, should we trust Triple H? Is he the one to look? Uh, that should be leading this company forward or should it be a whole new group of people? What do you think? Who should lead this company forward? Do you have any suggestions who they can go out to lead this company forward? Should it be somebody possibly not even in the wrestling business? I think that's a bad move, but should it be someone like Dana White that proved that he knows how to lead a company with fighters? You guys let me know. Everybody have a nice one. Please make sure you sub to my channel. And thank you guys for everything. Especially thank you for helping this channel grow.